Hi, guys, how are you guys doing? We're gonna move to that part of the series of lecture of fluid, fluid mechanics. I mean, and I honestly hope that you've been enjoying so far to one of the more celebrated equations of the, the whole field. And that's a very popular equation called Bernoulli's equation, which is over there. And right now, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna really use a mathematical approach as well as Newton's second law. So if you really want a lesson on resolving forces and seeing what results you can get by resolving forces, I think this is quite good. And it's also is applicable to analyzing free body diagrams. Now, I hope I do a decent job and I hope I've done Bernoulli proud. So, Bernoulli's equation via F equals to MA, I missed out something here along a streamline. What is a streamline? Well, a streamline is, is simply put, okay, or shall I say in fluid mechanics, there's a lot of ways that we can describe lines of the particles. Uh, some streamline, lines of force, street lines, path lines, but let's just say for the purpose of today's lesson that the streamline is taken from this point to this point over here. So water particle is moving along the streamline and the water particle is there over there, like so. Now we would have to label some of the dimensions. The, the it's a small little. I mean, the one particle is definitely three, three dimensional. So there's a small little change in y over here. But our analysis is just stick into the s and n plane. Why is it s and n plane? Because the s plane is along the streamline, and the n plane is normal to the streamline. I hope you can see that. So we label a small change in n over here, and now here there's a small change in s. So these are the dimensions of the one particle. Now. We're going to get an equation by F equals to MA. So basically what we want to do is that we want to sum the forces along the streamline and that's equals to the mass times the acceleration. And let's see what, what we can get out of that. So obviously first we need the forces that is along the streamline. Well, there's one force over here which is the force by the pressure, or let's just say F1. There's another force over here which is the force also by the pressure, let's say F2. And it's acting in this direction over here. On top of that, there's a weight. Okay, and there is the shearing stress, which is given by tau. But for the purpose of today's argument, we'll let a, a certain we'll introduce a condition, and that the condition is the liquid is inviscid. So this implies that tau equals to zero. That is to really categorize our analysis to a certain li a certain type of liquid, which is the inviscid. Is that reasonable? Yes, it is, because if the body were to move as a rigid body, there is no sharing stress in between, so we let tau equal zero. So we got the weight, we are left with the weight, F1 and F2, and the, uh, this tau is now equal to zero, so there will be less three this forces over here. So let's start with our analysis over here. Now, what is the mass? The mass is given by density, and it would be a small change in S, a small change in N, a small change in Y, given by the volume, and the acceleration, I'll rewrite it as V, D, V, partial V, partial S. Does that make sense? Uh, very quickly looking at it, acceleration, as you all know, is dV dt, right? So I will just rewrite that as dV dS multiplied by dS dt, which is going to be equals to dV dS multiplied by V, which is what I have over here. So this is what our right hand side is. Now we are, we are concerned with the force equals to, or the result, uh, resolution of the force along the streamline. Now let's first tackle the forces by the pressure F1 and F2. We label the pressure at that point as P. However, there will be a small change in the pressure that at this point here and at this point over here because we are moving away from P. But we also bear in mind that the change is small because it's due to a small change in X. Now I did this in a lot of my previous lessons, okay, which I'm still going to do the same thing. And there are two ways that you can call it. Or one is the, the more proper way, that's called Taylor's expansion and ignoring powers of small change in S that's too or high. Okay. And the other way is called calculus, uh, calculus of variations. But both of them give us the same result. What is the result? Well, basically, if the pressure is at the center, the force at, pre at, at point one, or oh, sorry, the pressure at, at this plane is going to be equal to this subtract by, because we're moving backwards along the streamline, partial differentiate pressure with respect to S, and we have to multiply that by the distance, which is a small change in S divided by 2. Okay, this, because it's, it's calculation, uh, calculus of variations, because we are just taking a small change, we are varying the pressure in a small way, multiplied by the distance. Similar to your gradient times of distance uh, formula. This would be the pressure, so we need to multiply that by the area, correct? And the area would be a small change in N and a small change in Y. And this would be equals to F1. Now F2, F2, I'll just write it quickly, F2 is basically this one plus or minus. Uh, is it, you have no minus or plus. So F1 would have to be this minus this, and F2 would have to be this plus this. Why? Because again, we are moving forward along the streamline. That's why it's a plus. That's for the force at F2. Oh, sorry, this will be the pressure at F2 and multiplied by the area. So if we were to take F, F, F1, take away F2, sorry, is it? Um, let me just have a quick check. 
Okay, if we were to take F1, take away F2, F1 take away F2 to get the resultant pressure, sorry, the resultant force along the streamline. So right now this one is not this one yet because we have not taken into account of the weight. This one is basically the result uh, resolution of forces along the streamline. So if we were to take this thing over here, it will be equals to pressure take away partial P, partial S, small change in S, take away 2. Then we're going to subtract this same thing. So you subtract P, but this time we need to subtract because it's minus, minus, okay? F2 is a plus, so we, multi we multiply the minus inside there and get minus. And it will be partial P, partial S, small change in S, divided by 2. And we take all that, um, times that by the area, which is small change in S, small change in Y. Um, doing some simple math, we will get, subtract, minus, partial differential P with respect to S, multiplied by S, uh, as the 2 is gone because we subtracted twice, and small change in N, small change in Y, and this would equal 2 minus partial P, partial S, and the volume, which we will designate as V dash. So that's what we have over here. This is the resolution of forces along the streamline from F1 and F2. However, we are still not done because we still got the weights. Well, let's just calculate the weight for now. A small change in the weight is going to be equals to what it will be? It will be simply the density multiplied by the volume, correct? Oh, sorry, density multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the volume. So this would be a small change in the weight. However, we need to define an angle theta over here because remember, we are using um, Newton's second law along the streamline. So we need to get the component of the, of the weight in this direction, which is actually going backwards. So later we will have to introduce the negative sign. Right? Okay. And how can I do that? Well, I will just simply multiply that by, or shall I, shall I say, and the weight component along the streamline would be simply this multiplied by uh, sine theta. And I can re-express that as the specific weight multiplied by a sine theta. Right? Because I want the component that is acting along the streamline. Remember, if I resolve forces that is going perpendicular and uh, along the streamline, I can ignore the perpendicular ones because it doesn't affect the motion, which is this component over here. I'm concerned with the component which is acting in this way of the weight. So this is the equation that we can, and now we can start resolving the forces. Okay, I will rewrite this as the density and a small change in the volume, because we anticipate that the volume is going to drop out, which you will. Now, this one is going to be, it goes to this one over here, which is partial P, partial S, a small change in the volume, and then uh, this, okay, this subtract this is the resultant force along the streamline due to the pressure. But now I will subtract the weight along the streamline, the component of the weight along the streamline, and I subtract that because it's going backwards, which is basically this one over here. So subtract the specific weight, density sine theta, and I will equal that to density, the volume, and V partial V partial S, our acceleration that we calculated before. Okay, and now from this equation over here, I can, as, as I, I said before, I can eliminate the weight and I'll just get the subtract specific weight sine theta minus by partial P partial S and equals to specific uh, density V partial V partial S. Okay, and that is a differential form or a differential equation form of Bernoulli's equation. Now, I know it isn't exactly what you see or what you learn, but I believe that is good because what this tells us is that now we have let the density vary. You see, the density is still over there. So, we have not assumed that the fluid is incompressible. The fluid still can be compressible. That's given by the, the density over here. However, at Gaussian math, or what I'm going to do is that I really want to introduce a mathematical, rig a rigorous mathematical approach on how we're going to integrate, integrate this equation. Because as you can see, we've got partial derivatives. So, things are still not quite clear on how the integration gets done. We still got to sign the over there. That's the next part of the lesson, so if you want to find out, this one is still good. It's a really generalized form which you can use. Well, actually, it's not so useful, but it's still a generalized form. But if you want to find out, stay tuned for the next video as we will tackle the integration of this equation right here.